Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of Building a Better South. We're here in Norton Commons at the Fine Home Building House, and we're upstairs. We're gonna give you guys a little tour of the second floor, but first. I just got off the phone with YouTube. They're threatening to cancel Building a Better South if we don't bring back Gretchen. So she's been busy over to Edgewood. I've been making the, uh, making the appearances. Ratings are down. We gotta bring her back into the series and bring her up to speed on what's been going on. So let's see if we can find her. Yes, oh, hey, hey she guys. Is. <laughs> You're alive. Yes, yes. Just been taking a little time off from uh, Building a Better South to work on projects. Can it really be considered time off? <laughs> yes, no, not really. Just kind of work on making our, uh, house at home and unpacking boxes and holidays and kids stuff. So I'm back though. Back. We're happy to have your pretty face back. Thank you. Thank you so much <laughs> for having me back. So what are we going to talk about today? So today we are bringing you guys into a spec house that Jason and I have built here in Norton Commons. And we wanted to kind of show you some design details that we did, some new stuff that we brought into this spec house, a partnership that we have with cafe appliances and how we incorporated those appliances in this home and you want to mention how that all started or how it came about or how you got involved with right cafe. so luckily for us cafe is owned by or part of ge and ge is a local appliance park area here in louisville which you know jason and i have a lot of friends and family who work at GE, either in accounting. I have a sweet aunt who works actually on the assembly line. Yeah. And so we've always felt those ties to you know our local companies. So they had reached out. They were looking for local designers and a builder. And they reached out to us and asked Jason and I if we would be interested in partnering with them on a project and so Jason said well we just happen to have two spec houses that we're getting ready to start in Norton Commons what about if we built those homes and used your appliances in the house we could showcase them we could use them you know for open houses and we will style and shoot pictures in it and they loved the idea it was out of the box for them something they had never done so we were fortunate enough to put the matte white appliances in one of the houses which turned out so beautifully which is yeah. what we ended up putting in edgewood right and then in this house today we've got the matte black which is really just handsome and striking and stunning and we've actually had another client who put the matte black stove in their in their home yeah. so we're, we're excited to show you guys what these appliances kind of look like in real life well, and, and the cool thing with them is they're customizable and so as you guys get to design your projects you can learn different ways to customize your mm -hmm. appliances and really alter the look of your kitchen just based on your appliance hardware color right and the fact that you don't have to worry about like just your only option being stainless and you know, a lot of our clients, I think, always just wanted to cover their appliances up with cabinet panels, which just is another additional added cost. But these appliances are so beautiful that there is no need to cover them. They are great, and I, I love the choices that they offer. Well, I always remember Gretchen when it comes to picking out appliances with customers. She's like, you guys go take care of that. Just uh, don't screw it up or get anything with a high... Uh, stove back or something that's gaudy. So. Well, I just hate it for people to pay me for my time to walk into the appliance store with them for the only option really to be stainless. I, you know, it just was a waste of their money to have me there to just walk around and say, sure, that stainless looks great. <laughs> so now I'm kind of excited to go with clients to, to help choose appliances if they want to go the cafe route so that we can really make those appliances work within their kitchen and you know coordinate so beautifully with all the handles and the pools and the faucets so it really becomes just a fun aspect of the kitchen as it should be because it's you know appliances are not cheap they're you know so you want to love your appliances and you also want them to look beautiful in your space well and speaking of beautiful in the space i mean I love the moodiness that these matte black appliances and the vibe you've created is, is a little out of the box for you. It is, but I like it. Yeah. Yeah. And this one's been very well received. We paired it with 
I guess you did the white up top. Yeah, so these are wellboard cabinets, which, you know, I think you guys can get nationally, which, which is great. It's just kind of one of their standard whites. And then we have the matte black pools, because again, we're kind of tying these matte black appliances in with touches throughout the kitchen. And then what did we do on the base? What color is that? So this, the base, we actually went with a white oak with a white wash, which, you know, is, is coming back. Wood tones are coming back in cabinets and it's not your old school honey oak. Not our or dark first kitchen dark, we have. <laughs> dark cherry, you know, I think it's just, I love what wood brings back to a kitchen. It's just that warmth. And I think when you do the white oak with the white wash, it just, it's really beautiful. Well, and it, like you said, it adds the warmth to a, a house that lends a little bit more modern. It still has a warmth to it. Which yes. Is and I love that you can see the grain. So again, you're not only getting the warmth, but you're getting a texture too, which is so important. And a tip for folks too is a lot of times when you're shown an appliance handle or a, a drawer pull or a drawer knob, a lot of times people will gravitate towards either a small knob or even a small pool. Mm -hmm. What have you done here? So we did oversize, which was nice. So an option for this drawer would have been, you could have done like two small pools or one oversized. So I really love the oversized look on these. I think it, it adds to that modern feel. So let's step back and talk. I don't know if we've ever been excited to talk about <laughs> refrigerators, but what do you got going here? Yeah, so this is the matte black with the brushed bronze. So the choices or the options that you can get, this is how this fridge comes standard, but you can um, switch out and get other options for uh, increased charge. But so it comes with the brushed bronze. You can get it with the uh, brushed stainless with the brush black, which is what I think that, you know, Jason was- I really was wanted real the brush black yeah. against the black in this kitchen. So we're, we're, I think maybe order a set of those and toss them on and see Yeah, so I, cause I think it'd be cool to have the black on black and then the brushed copper. Yeah. So, you know, you can see it just really is just a beautiful statement on this refrigerator that is so sleek, but looks really, really cool. And we can attest now that we've been using these in our home for about a month. The, it is a very sturdy appliance. And the cool thing is, this has a built-in Keurig, but it also has, you can get hot water, filtered water, and it's been a pretty cool uh, fridge for us. Yeah, got Love ample it. storage. So you have your fridge on your top and you have the freezer drawer pull out on the bottom, which is, I think, a pretty yeah. typical configuration for refrigerators. And so you, we paired the black with this cool matte black countertop from, where are these guys from? So this is uh, Cambria and this is their matte matte black and uh, again I think it just worked so beautifully and this is something that you guys can so easily replicate in your own kitchen but again you know I wasn't doing anything out of the box too much too crazy but again matte black matte black touches of the black and the handles and the, you know and then we have our hues of our brushed gold tones and on the island one of the details that I think it was your idea to help modernize this kitchen a little bit is the waterfall edge. Yes, and I think that's one of your favorite details. <laughs> and Jason had been wanting to do a waterfall edge in a spec house, and this one just seemed to lend itself perfectly to doing that. So keeping it really clean, just adding that detail, I think it looks really great in here. And other than the appliances, one of the stars of the show in this kitchen has been the I guess I'm always amazed at your use of brass accents or Schluter strips in cabinetry and it, just in overall design. So if you want to yeah. be Vanna and show us uh, <laughs> what you got cooking up here. Right. So I'm always thinking, how can I create an interesting design element in a space with using everyday products that, you know, you guys can get access to, but just make a space more interesting. And I always say, you know, Joanna has her ship lap and uh, I have my Schluter. So we, what we did is we actually did um, a ship, ship lap back to this island and then I added this little brass Schluter detail in between. And I think it just really makes it cool and interesting. Well, and I remember I was dead set on, I wanted a cool funky ceramic tile that was white and black. It was very on trend, but it might've been too trendy. Yeah. And we looked and looked and couldn't find anything. And I was then... like, been there, seen it. I've seen that picture a million times on <laughs> Pinterest. I was like, let's do something a little bit more interesting. So. Yeah, and Gretchen crafted up the idea of doing the Schluter and it, 
I mean, it's it's sexy. I don't yeah. know what else to call it. <laughs> yeah, but it, it looks ties really... ties in with the appliances, and uh, I think it's sharp. Yes, I, I really, I love the way it turned You're out. You're a trendsetter. Now it's funny seeing guys uh, and girls all across yeah. the, the country now incorporating stuff like this, so it's, it's neat. Yeah, it was kind of my word for, I think, 2018. I was like, let's put Schluter in it. <laughs> let's add Schluter. <laughs> uh, so as we walk around this way, we've got uh, the sink. What did you do over here? So again, we just did the matte black faucet. These are from Delta. Mm -hmm. And we just did a, a nice, big, wide sink. We opted not to do the farmhouse sink in this one. It just uh, wanted something a little bit cleaner, more contemporary. So, you know, just have the the matte black countertops and sink. And you didn't go with the standard subway. What, what do you got going Right, there? So, so here we did a herringbone pattern and two by six tiles. So they are just porcelain tiles laid in this pattern. And we opted for, again, tying in the black for the dark black grout, which I think really makes this pattern pop in this kitchen. Yeah, because if you look behind the stove here, I mean, it's like the money shot. I mean, it really shows off. You got the cool hood and you put the little wood back here just to tie it all together. Yeah. So Have the... you done this before? <laughs> Just a time or two. Yeah. So, you know, the, the lower cabinets are, again, that whitewashed white oak. And the uppers, we have the white. So we kind of wanted to marry the two together in the hood design. So it kind of pulled, pulled it all together. So you designed this one in the hood. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Let's show a couple things. So this house we're in is actually for sale. It's $4.99 in Norton Commons. It's just under 2,000 square feet. But... The first floor is about 900 square feet and you painted the interior doors black. We did, we, we painted them black magic, okay. named after us. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> who makes that or who, cause we get a lot of people, so cause it's not it, like black, but it's not yeah, gray. It's, the great thing about black magic and that's Sherman Williams, um, is that it is as dark of a gray as you can get before you turn black. So it's it's really a great, almost black. Yeah, and then you put the brass hardware on the doors. And so then it really we did, yeah. Sparkles. And then, and then light fixtures are a mix of the brass and black all throughout the house, which again, just kind of ties in that theme and that story. And you know, one of the other things to get a cohesive feel in this house, uh, one of my favorite designs, and we've gotten a ton of questions on this mantle. Is like, I know. Can you just build these and sell them? <laughs> I probably swipe could. up. <laughs> <laughs> swipe up. So this, it's about as simple as it gets, guys. I mean, there's probably less material cost in this mantle than most traditional mantles. It's simple. One by on the bottom, one by on the top. We've got about a one by eight. So there's not. It's. It's not a super deep ledge, but enough to set some yeah. stuff on there. And then we simply angle the piece in between. So you build this piece, build this piece, put a little angle, and then the black magic paint. We did do three coats of paint on this to get that super slick feel. Yes. But it gives you that really modern feel. And then you paired it with, um, that's a cool tile. Yeah, you want to talk about the tile a little bit? This, sure. was kind of, this was Jason's kind of design baby. And I think he even reached out on Instagram and you guys were voting on which tile <laughs> we should use for the surround. So this ended up being the winner. I, think I do we, love getting your all's feedback. Yes. And people wonder, do you, you've already made your mind up. I know we did a lot of that with Edgewood. And a lot of times that's when I go to you guys for your input because either we're at a, a spot where we're not sure or we just want to you know have you guys be a part well, of yeah because we especially this being a spec house we want to kind of appeal to the masses and you know so we definitely take that input to heart yeah and so since i couldn't get my ceramic tile on the the island we right. thought we'd incorporate kind of a cool and this is actually a porcelain tile it's from laura ashley uh, from the tile shop but it's one of their spec tiles uh, again, we were in there just looking for something a little bit different. And this one really stuck out to me as, again, given that modern feel and given that overall vibe that we were trying to achieve here. But I think it's got that, like, a timeless pattern to it. So I don't think it's going to seem dated in five years. Yeah, so when somebody moves in here, they can totally customize the feel and look of this house. And it doesn't have to be, yeah, it's not overly modern or cold at all. No, not at all. Um, so what do you think? You want to throw it back and finish up our tour over at the, uh, 
fine home building house, second floor, and uh, get back on track over there? Sure, I'll have to get my toboggan, my gloves, my snow boots. <laughs> well, maybe I'll take it. We're gonna walk you through a little bit of the master. We're gonna have, this will be the uh, bed wall right behind us. Big door there, windows there out to the porch. And then probably, I'm always excited, have lots of cool stuff I like to share with you guys, but the master bath, I've been wanting to do this feature for a while. And uh, since we don't have a homeowner involved, we can do whatever we want. So we're doing what's called a wet room. So we're putting the tub in the shower one it helps save on space but it's just cool so <laughs> how many times do you get out of the tub and you're wet anyway so we're coming in we'll have a vanity on each side of the window so you'll have a little bit of space in here and then this wall will be all glass right here and so tub will sit right here and then the shower i'm sorry we'll sit the tub back here shower will be in the front and this whole space will be a big shower pan. So we'll probably have a rain head from the ceiling. We'll probably do a wall mounted one here. And that way this whole space, we'll pick out a cool tile. All this will flow. And hopefully you guys will think it's as cool as it is uh, in my head. So <laughs> anyway, you'll have to uh, stay in touch as we uh, come a little bit further with the selections on this one. And then we got the powder room right here little linen closet up there. And uh, I think it'll be a neat space. Let's pop in. I'll show you the other two bedrooms up here, laundry space. And then one of the things we also did up here is I like when you come up to the second floor of our homes, I never want you to walk directly into a bedroom or just this tight little hallway. So this house is about 2,400 square feet. So it's, it's a nice size house. It's not overly large but I want you to feel like you've got a little bit of elbow room. So as you'll see this little loft space, as I like to call it, as soon as you come up the steps here, we can do a built-in, you can do desk. You've got a huge wall here for gallery or art space. So again, really creating some flexibility for our future homeowners to design this space how they like to. And then we put the master up front, so you've got a lot of privacy. And then we put the two bedrooms in the back. So we'll come back here. To separate the two bedrooms from the master, we've also tucked in a little laundry room here. And then out back, the bedroom is, it's a decent sized bedroom. And then instead of just traditionally putting one window in a bedroom, I like to put two. Again, cost a little bit more. But natural light, you can't put a price on it in my eyes. I, I really like to get natural light coming in the bedroom. Kids are up here studying, guests are up here. Light just makes a space feel good. So putting in that extra window, right now you can see all the farmland out there. Uh, so whoever gets this spot will have some pretty good views uh, for the years to come. Right next to me is another bedroom, we'll walk you through that, but it's identical to this one. Nice little closet space and uh, should be a great family uh, place for somebody to raise a small family or even empty nester could live well in this house. So three bedrooms upstairs, laundry up here, all the living's on the first floor, and then the basement will also have an additional fourth bedroom if needed, so. Hope you guys enjoyed that tour of the second floor of the fine home building house. And I know all you design lovers love seeing what you came up with in the matte black house over here at Norton Commons. Yes, so. it was a great project. Uh, I'm really excited the way it turned out. So we're gonna see some of those modern finishes in the uh, fine home building house? I think we're gonna do traditional with modern twist. Okay, yeah. yeah, we do have an all brick exterior, so maybe we'll nod to the past on that one. Yes, so. we've, we've looked at some old Louisville houses for this house. What do we have coming up for folks to be coming back next couple weeks for? Uh, I think we've got our windows going in, doors. We've got a meeting set up at Louisville Tile with Robin. I've uh, been working on some tile selections. Okay, cool. So guys, come back and join us. If you want, you can follow Gretchen on Instagram at Gretchen Black. You can find me, Jason Black, with Artisan Signature Homes. And together, we're building, building a, a better, better South. south.